Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in your studies of series, you should learn in order the infinite geometric series, then the harmonic series, then the alternating harmonic series, and then after that, the P series. So, what is a P series? A series such as this is called a P series. So, in general, a P series has this form. Okay, cool. And when P is equal to 1, we get the harmonic series. Remember, the harmonic series is 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth and so on. So we know that when P is equal to 1, this series diverges because we know that the harmonic series diverges. Now, unfortunately, there is no way uh, for us to just tell the value of a certain P series. But we know, for example, that when P is equal to 2, that is, when we have this here, that is, when we have this infinite sum, the infinite sum is equal to pi squared over 6. In fact, that's the subject of my next video. My next video will be showing why 1 plus a quarter plus a ninth plus a sixteenth plus a twenty-fifth plus dot 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 has to equal pi squared over 6. So look out for that video. But yeah, let's continue here. So as I just said, this here, uh, I'm going to show. But in general, um, it's not clear how you can find the value of a particular P-series. Now, a P-series converges, always true, if P is greater than 1. So whenever P is greater than 1, even if we're not able to find the value of the sum, we know that the sum, the infinite sum, is convergent. That is, it goes to a finite number. The question is, why? Why is it that when P is greater than 1, a P-series will converge? Well, let's make some space and find out why. Okay, now, as I just said, a P-series converges if P is greater than 1. And the question again is, why? Right? Okay, now we know... Uh, that we have one uh, test for convergence of series called the integral test. We have many, like including the ratio test, the alternating series test, and so on. And each of them I will dedicate a video to. So I will dedicate at least one video to the integral test. I'll dedicate a video introducing it and um, proving it, the integral test. And then I'll make a separate video with at least a couple of examples of how to use the integral test. And of course, you can consider this as your first example of how to use the integral test. Now, what the integral test says is, well, if you have a series made of a sub n, and you could associate that with a function f of n, then you can compare the series with the integral. So if you compare the series to the integral version of the series, so this would be the series, and again, f of n is a sub n. So for this series, we have this, this integral associated to it, right? And uh, so we have this integral and this series. And what the integral test says is, if the integral is convergent, then the series will be convergent. So here, what we're going to do is, we're going to assume that p is greater than 1, and show that this integral converges, so that we could say, that this series converges. Um, so basically, the way we prove why a P series converges when P is greater than 1 is using uh, the test of convergence called the integral test. Uh, and again, I'll make a separate video explaining uh, why the integral test works, that is proving it and introducing it, and then a different video with many other examples of how to use the integral test. But like uh, I've already said, this is your first example on using the integral test, which again says that if the uh, integral version of the series converges, then so does the series. And it's pretty intuitive, like draw um, 1 over x and um, like see the area exactly under 1 over x uh, to the right of x equals 1. Um, and notice that that's not a bounded area. Uh, but yeah, if that area is finite, then you could imagine that uh, rectangular approximations of that area uh, will also be finite, which is basically what the series does, is 
um, uh, as opposed to the integral is like the series of rectangular approximations of the exact area, which is the integral, right? Okay, okay. But like I said, you can wait for the details um, on the video uh, about the integral test. Anyway, given the P is greater than 1, uh, we see that uh, the integral version of the series would be this. Now, since P is greater than 1, we see that we can rewrite the integrand like this. Yeah, and then we notice that since the upper limit is infinity, this is just an improper integral. And I've already made uh, numerous videos, I shouldn't say numerous, but at least a few videos on um, the um, improper integrals. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to go in detail of how to deal with improper integrals. It's pretty simple. It's just a grammatical change from this to this. Um, and then doing the antiderivative, which is this here, and then evaluating it TM1, right, uh, for the antiderivative. Notice that 1 is an x value. It's not a p value, so don't worry about 1 minus p being 0. 1 replaces x, as does t, right? So basically, once we do the evaluating, as the integrating part is pretty simple, right? Like I didn't talk you through the details there because you should know, right? But yeah. Uh, once uh, we evaluate, and by the way, before we evaluate, I simplified this quotient here. Uh, remember, uh, p is greater than 1, so negative uh, p uh, plus 1 when um, in the, the exponent, when we bring it down in the denominator, right? Like when we write this x to the negative p plus 1 in the denominator, it's going to be x to the uh, negative, negative p plus 1, which is x to the positive p minus one right you should know you should know basically the algebra details of um, how to go from here to here um, given that p is greater than one I uh, should be able to gather that on your own okay and then now we evaluate at t and one and that's just plugging in t and then plugging in one and taking the difference right and that's that there right and now when uh, t goes to infinity right remember p is fixed and greater than one uh, so here we're going to get infinity to like some positive exponent. So that's going to tend towards infinity. So we're going to go to 1 over some constant times uh, like something tending towards infinity. So this is going to go to 0. And then here uh, there is no t. So we're just going to uh, get this guy, right? And 1 to the power p minus 1 is just 1. So I won't bother writing that. So basically what we're saying is, uh, this here, once we evaluate the limit, turns into this, and now we can throw the negative in the denominator and write this here, uh, cleaned up like that. And so uh, when p is greater than 1, we're saying this integral converges to this value. It goes. This integral here goes to this value when p is greater than 1. Well, that means that this integral converges. And the integral test says if this integral converges, then the series version of this integral also converges. So this series here converges. But this here is our p-series, right? So when p is greater than 1, then uh, the p-series converges is what we just concluded. Yeah? All right, cool. I hope you enjoyed this. And keep watching. Um, all right, take care. Bye.